Hi everybody, my name is Geneviève Sabourin and most of you, they, you think you know me, but you don't. Uh, but if you think you know me, you think I'm Alec Baldwin stalker. I'm not. Uh, I'm the person that's been wrongfully convicted in New York in a case that started in 2012 against Alec Baldwin uh, as a stalking and harassment, but I am wrongfully convicted. And I never had the chance or the opportunity um, to speak to any American uh, channel. I couldn't speak to ABC or NBC. NBC, why? Because at that time, Alec Baldwin was doing 30 Rock. And he was very, very, bringing a ton of money for NBC. So it's not like NBC would say, well, there's a sexual scandal of Alec Baldwin uh, who wins a ton of Emmy for us and we can sell this show for years and years and years on videos and DVDs and, and, and on internet. So, uh oh, we're not gonna let that little French Canadian girl come here and have a sexual scandal that's gonna kill that, that gold that gold mine of Alec Baldwin for NBC. I mean, we're talking about millions and millions and millions a year that Alec Baldwin still bring uh, to NBC. Also, <laughs> regardless the need to say uh, SNL, and uh, now, uh, you know, that he, he won again an Emmy, like not this year, but the year prior, uh, for, for doing uh, the President Trump portrait. So, uh, Alec Baldwin is very, very uh, lucrative for NBC. So, when my arrest happened in 2012, NBC was not going to say, uh-oh, there's a case against Alec Baldwin and a French-Canadian, Geneviève Sabourin. And uh, we don't know what happened. Uh, we don't know who's at fault. We don't know who's the abuser, who's the victim, but something's going on. So instead of saying that, in order to make sure their profitable actor, Alec Baldwin, was going to continue bring money in, they said, we're gonna put that girl down and we're gonna label her as Alec Baldwin stalker even before the charge were applied on me, all over the news, I was Alec Baldwin's stalker. And it was very aggressively uh, said, and in a way that leaves no doors to questioning the statement of, I was a stalker. And so, the way, in the world we live in, uh, it's not about telling the truth and it's not about doing the best journalistic interview with taking the time and questioning and, and doing it right. It's about who prints faster than the other. And so because of internet, that's how it is. It's who prints faster. So when one network, major network like NBC, launch Stalker, then that's it. Everything else internet goes without without a, an interview with me without without verifying the fact they don't have to do it because what how they print in order to never be able to be um to be responsible for what they print they just say nbc said Geneviève Sabourin is a stalker and that's it because they're not saying they think she am i am a stalker they just said nbc said and NBC knows exactly how it works. So what they do is they say what they need to say. They ignite the fire. And then as the fire goes and everybody on internet reprint and reprint and retweet everywhere on the internet, the initial source retract themselves and erase their messages and it's no longer on air and it's no longer on their website and it's no longer available for me when I get out of jail to take the initial starting fire, the sparkle that launched the message, the initial message. I cannot go on that and see it. I never did. <clears throat> But then I see the repercussions and the consequence. Oh my God, my French accent is killing me. One second. 
you're gonna see me touch my nose a lot i'm sorry i am covered by allergies so i do this or do this and i wish i don't but i will so i'm telling you so the repu the 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 uh, it goes like this round and round in circle and it covered the internet and then when it covers the internet it goes to every other media and everybody's saying well uh, Huffington Post is saying this and um, New York Post is saying this and you see this scandal in three hours all over the planet and I am here in jail not knowing why I'm arrested as I was waiting to take a coffee with a friend that I know since 15 years <laughs> that we have a ton of friends in common and uh, I was not even in his building I was in front of uh, in the street with my dog at the moment of my arrest uh, I announced myself inside of the building I did a few steps and I said you know what I'm just gonna wait outside on the street I had a new puppy I wanted to make sure he could uh, you know walk on the streets and uh, do what he had to do so I didn't want him to do something like that in the very expensive lobby of Alec Baldwin so I said to the doorman I said I'll be waiting outside so technically all my rights uh, as a citizen were uh, totally destroyed like I'm arrested in the middle of the street as I have no aggressive demeanor no aggressive behavior I was totally peacefully there like everybody else and like the Gestapo did I was taken detained and taken away for an adventure that even like six years after I'm still abused about this adventure every day and everywhere I go so I'm going to I'm going to take the time now to do what I never did which is giving my interviews and I'm going to do it on my channel uh on my YouTube channel and why am I going to do that It's very simple it's just it is a safety component that I never found anywhere else I always said I'm going to give you my interview but I want to see the final product before you air I want to see the way you you're gonna cut and edit my interview because if i give you an interview you can transform it in a way that to make me say even the opposite of what i'm saying so it's very very scary i could not afford to give my interview uh to people who, who would have not respect and nobody wanted to give me the right to see the final edit editing before uh putting it on air so I never find in the United States a channel, a TV station, a radio or a journal uh, to give my full length interview. Also, uh, how can you resume like four years uh, or six years in an hour with, with commercials? With, so I could never, never find how I was going to tell you the truth. But an innocent can never move on uh, unless the truth is told. And I really want to move on. So, and I, I'm desperate to move on. And I do not want to be on air uh, with my face telling you about my life. Uh, the, the good part, the bad part. I hate that. I'm an actress and when I do a play, I hide myself in the character. So you don't see me, you see the character. So that, that is not frightening for me, but <clears throat> being here with my face, my name, my misery, <coughs> pardon, telling my story, I hate that. I really hate that. And um, I don't want to do it and I don't want to do it to a point that I never did it since I got off of Rikers Island in four years. So people will say, then why are you doing it now? Okay, good questions. It's because after Rikers Island, I said to myself, I'm going to find a job. Or it's, it might take a couple of months, but people will forget. And I will get back on my feet and I will find a job and I will repeat myself. I'm extremely hardworking, dedicated, talented, and I'm courageous, and I'm smart. So somebody uh, will hire me, and I will 
rebuild my life. And I, if I rebuild my life and find love and get married and have kids, then I will put everything behind and try to, I don't know, you know, but that was the goal. And that's all I knew and that's all I could. And so I didn't want to give an interview about my privacy. I don't like that. But six years after uh, the beginning of all this, I never worked again for real, uh, not in my field. And I'm going to tell you, I worked at two places, but I was unpaid for, I was paid half the salary for doing two jobs. Oh God, I've been abused like you wouldn't believe. And I'm going to tell you who were those abusers. I'm going to spend the time here to tell you who I was prior, like for 20 years, and I knew Baldwin then, and who I hang out with. And I was working in New York, in LA, in Paris. I was, I was working in Cannes. I went to Cannes Film Festival all the time. I was in Cannes, like, like it was my second house, uh, because I speak French. So Americans were like very interested to have a French speaking uh, person in their team and their Amer American uh, sales team. So I was, I was in Sundance Film Festival. I was all over. I, I went all the way to visiting um, uh, studios in Egypt. So I was very uh, active in uh, film and television in uh, American project. Uh, shut internationally and so that's who I was so I'm gonna tell you with who and where and what's the project I'm gonna give you name I'm gonna give you photos I'm gonna share emails I'm gonna share a uh, text message I'm gonna share um, recordings and I'm gonna tell you uh, who these people were for me uh, business relation friends uh, lovers perhaps we'll see and then i'm going to tell you uh what what the help i received as a me too victim because that's that's technically what i am i am a me too victim and i'm still up today uh trapped in in the aftermath for you it's the aftermath for me it's the continuation i'm trapped in the same moment since 2012 it's I'm, I'm trapped there not because i'm not strong emotionally or uh psychologically no it's just because and i'm gonna tell you in the further videos i'm gonna show you how much money i made uh back then and uh, that i had my house was fully paid my my mercedes benz was fully paid and i hate giving names but i'm gonna give a few names just to bring a context i my my traveling uh suitcase were louis vuitton and my purse were gucci and louis vuitton i was dressed in designer clothes so that was who i was and then something happened and you'll see Ilaria Baldwin, her name is Hilary Ilar Lynn Thomas, Hilary Lynn Award Thomas. One day, <laughs> she called 911 pretending, and I used the right words, pretending she was going to marry Alec Baldwin. And then by using powerful names like Baldwin, after 9-11, there's a, an anti-terrorist um, way of functioning if somebody calls 911 and you are rich famous uh, a celebrity then there's a different protocol by nypd so no matter what's happening the person will be arrested no matter what's happening even if it's the celebrity that is making the trouble and causing the trouble and lying like you wouldn't believe and being uh, toxic and abuser this person here that is the non-famous person especially if you're a foreigner you're going to be arrested and you're going to be detained because that's the law now and that's a protocol and you're going to be uh persecuted like you're going to be uh injustice you're going to end up in front of a judge and you're going to be in court she knew that and so she called and my life here would never be my life and the person I was there died that day and I am nothing left of that person I lost all my friends my family I lost 
my work options, I lost my money, I lost my house, I lost my health, I lost my youth, I lost my sleep, <laughs> I lost everything. I lost my dignity, like my ability to be safe, and I lost my liberty. So she called, it took her two minutes. And then this, I'm gonna also share you my life after. My life since Rikers Island. Four years after Rikers Island, my battle to find work, my battle to find love, my battle to find friends, my battle to be, uh, to try to be who I am and, and function in society. And I'm gonna share with you my bank accounts and, and the condition I live in. So that's why I'm doing it right now. So stay tuned, I'm gonna do a lot of uh, videos on my YouTube channel and you're gonna discover who I was. You're gonna discover the legal proceed and how all my, my rights as a foreigner and a Me Too victim were <coughs> d destroyed in, in this, in this process. And you're gonna see the consequences of six months, uh, six months uh, at Rikers Island. You know, it's not six months and then, and then you get out of there and you get your life uh, like before. I'm going to share you my full life. I'm not going to write a book, but like Amorosa with President Trump, I have a ton of videos, a ton of recordings. I have a ton of photos, email, uh, texto, uh, you know, I'm going to drop a couple of names, which I hate to do usually, but now I have nothing left to lose. I'm a free radical in a jar and I need to survive. And in order to survive, then I need the truth to be told. And I will, and I'm not just going to tell you the truth, but I'm going to demonstrate with proof, with recordings, uh, with photos, with, with text, uh, and a and, and lot more, I mean, it's interesting, uh, what truly happened. And what happened to me can happen to any one of you because of the way the laws are made, because the way people uh, interfere, interact with each other, the way that everybody, everybody destroyed your rights. I mean, when, when power and money and fame and regular middle-class people, foreigner, I mean, you have no chance. So imagine if you're black or if you're Hispanic, like Rikers Island is full of people not convicted, waiting for a trial. And I was there for six months. And how many white people I saw? Four. And there's thousands of thousands of thousands of people there. And they're not convicted. They're innocent by the law waiting for a trial and they're detained for years and years and years and months against their right just because the color of their skin because they're foreigner i mean come on so i'm gonna tell you my journey in this law uh litigation in the united states against a conflict of interest as Alec Baldwin's best friend were Andrew Cuomo and Eric Schneiderman, which I, I had no chance and asked for a change of venue. And I mean, you're going to see what truly happened. So stay tuned, subscribe to my channel, Geneviève Sabourin, and please leave your comment. I'm going to read them, your question, your comments. I'm going to read them and I'm going to answer them. And they're going to generate the next videos so i am going to tell you the full truth with the names like eric trump larry trump uh we're gonna say uh, martin bregman the producer of scarface i'm gonna tell you who he was and what what's the implication oh yeah the other one um mario Casar, the producer that did terminator uh and divina the other producer and partner who did Terminators and 
you know, uh, Rambo and many, many films with Schwarzenegger and uh, Sylvester Stallone. So I hate to drop names, but I'm gonna have to do it in order to bring a real context. I'm gonna do it. Of course, none of the documents that I'm gonna show you are here in my house. I'm saying it for safety reason. They're all locked somewhere else in a safe. And, uh, and so no need to come here and destroy my house. You won't find anything, but I'm gonna bring you pictures, recording, text message, email of people like, you wanna know what happened. And, and then after that, you the people, you'll tell me if, I'm, if I can access justice. <coughs> so, sorry. So I'm gonna call my videos the truth and nothing but the truth. So watch them. It's coming on my channel, YouTube. Thank you very much for subscribing. Bye.